What's going on? It's Marty from Prambetter.com. If you want to follow along with the examples I'll be doing in this video, check out the video description to download the study guide. It's free to print or use on your tablet. All right, I know, I get it. You're probably thinking, Marty, of course I know that vapor pressure changes depending on the temperature, but how can I find the exact vapor pressure for some temperature? That's exactly what you were thinking, wasn't it? I know it was. All right, I'm just playing around, obviously. But in all seriousness, we're talking about the clausius clapeyron equation. It looks really scary and all that stuff, but literally at the end of the day, it just says, give me a temperature and I'll tell you what the vapor pressure is at that temperature. Nothing more than that, okay? So just to reiterate that, we're just trying to find a vapor pressure for a given temperature, nothing else there. Now you're actually gonna run into two versions of this equation. The one I have here on the left is gonna be more for like, getting a line of best fit. So you might see a question, and this is really more of like a homework kind of question where they give you a line of best fit and you use this form of the equation. Not really something that pops up on the exam because you need to like literally use Excel or something like that or a calculator, uh, like a graphing calculator to figure out the line of best fit. So it's not something that pops up on exams that much. So I'm not gonna really cover it that much in this video. On the other hand though, this one over here on the right, this is the important one. This is the one that pops up most frequently because this is something that you can just do a little bit of algebra with and get an answer. So this is called the quote two point formula and that's because as you might guess, there are two points. You have one temperature and pressure and another temperature and pressure, meaning P1, T1 and P2, T2. And it's just a way to relate those two together, okay? Now you might look at this and be like, damn logs don't worry i got you we're gonna go over that in just a second okay but a couple things to take away from this the r that you have in this equation is your gas constant okay so it's the one that's with joules moles and kelvin 8.314 and you see kelvin right there your temperature has to be in kelvin so don't forget to make that conversion when you're using this equation all right now some of you might just be a little bit anxious when you see logs i get it not a big deal so i'm going to take a couple minutes just to go through once and for all let you know what a log is and we're going to move on and try an example so those of you that are like nah i'm good with logs just let's just get to the example feel free to skip ahead a little bit but i want to make sure that we're all on the same page and that you know if you've ever been thinking like man i'm just so like nervous when i see logs this next couple minutes is just for you to make sure that you're comfortable with it okay so here's the thing all a log is, it's just a way to solve for an exponent. When you're finding a log, you're just asking the question, what's my exponent? So I'm gonna show you a quick example here. We have two to the X equals eight. So some of you might be able to look at that and say, oh, well, yeah, two cubed, two to the third power is eight. So that means that X is three. And if not, not a big deal. You can just kind of guess and check. So you can say, all right, well, two to the first power, that's two, that's not eight. Two to the second power, that's two times two, that's four. Not quite eight yet, but two times two times two, two to the third, oh, yeah, if I multiply those together, I get eight, which is yeah two cubed, okay? So as you can see, the power that gets me to eight, if I have a base two, is three. Two cubed is eight, so X is three, okay? Now, congrats, you just did a log, all right? Not trying to, you know, make it all that crazy here for you, but really, you just did a logarithm, okay? If you write this another way, you can say that the log base eight of two is three. That's all it is, okay? Now, you might be thinking, Marty, I've seen logs before. They're not all that easy. Okay. Can you show me something that's a little bit harder? I got you. No problem. How about this one? 3.4 to the X equals 12. Now you're definitely not going to do that one off the top of your head. I mean, unless you're like a supercomputer, but you know, most of us are not. So not a big deal. So this is really where like we see a reason for having logs because some people think like, Hey, why do we need a log if I can just do this every single time? But you know, unfortunately we can't, we have something like this, like 3.4 to the X. Do you know your 3.4 times tables? I sure don't. So that's why we want to have a function that allows us to deal with these kinds of expressions. Okay. Something that helps us solve for an exponent. That's all a log is. Okay. Now, a couple things to keep in mind here. When you see ln of x, that's just what we call a natural logarithm, and it's the logarithm with a base of e. So log base e of x, we just write ln of x. Same deal, nothing too crazy there. So when you're actually trying to solve, what you're gonna do, let's say you have an expression like this, ln of x equals two, you wanna solve for x, all you need to do is raise both sides of your equation from e to that power. So you're gonna do e to the power of both sides of your equation. So I'm gonna do e to the ln of x on this side and e squared. And that happens because the e and the ln cancel from that left-hand side, bringing down the x and I'm left with, I think that x a little bit better, x equals e squared. That would be the solution to that kind of an equation, all right? And that's really the extent of what you need to know for right now for how log rules work. Obviously, the more uh, you're comfortable with logs, the better it's gonna be. Not gonna be the last time you see logs in chemistry either, by the way. But for right now, that's about all we need in order to solve things, okay? So let's jump into an example. Quick little reminder though, 
Normal boiling point, if you're not familiar with that term, it just means it's the temperature that your substance boils when the pressure is one ATM. So in other words, when you see that phrase, normal boiling point, you should immediately assume that the pressure associated with that temperature is one atmosphere or 760 torr, depending on what units are given in the problem. Let's take a look. Benzene has a normal boiling point of 80.1 degrees Celsius. At what temperature does benzene boil when the external pressure is 445 torr? Benzene's heat of, vapor, heat of vaporization is 30.72 kilojoules per mole. All right, so this is screaming clausius clapeyron equation. How are we going to know that come exam time? Well, you're going to be given the heat of vaporization, and it's going to be something where they give you a temperature and a pressure and then some other temperature and a pressure. That is all just tons of alarms going off my head. I'm using the clausius clapeyron equation. So I'm going to start off by writing it here. And we're going to go back. We're going to look at the equation in a second. That way, you know, we have it nice and visualized. I'm just going to write it here and we'll talk about how we can memorize this in a good way if we need to. But this is going to be my way of memorizing it. I'm going to go back over here because some of you might have a different form of this thing. So just to be very clear, coming back up where I have this thing written. Okay. Some of you might have the version where you don't have a negative up front. And again, just depends on your professor. Sometimes professors do this. Literally, sometimes the same professor will change which one they have uh, semester to semester. So it really just depends. But you might have something where you just take that negative and you distribute it on the inside. And it looks like that. It's the exact same equation, just a little bit of algebra, nothing there. Now, the reason I put this one here in the study guy is because I think it's just easier to memorize. I can see that I have a P2 and P1. I read that in the order P2 over P1. And I have one over T2 minus one over T1. I just read it in that order, T2 and then T1. So for me, it's easier to just know that I have that negative there and then that the subscripts follow in that same order. That's why I have it there, but it makes no difference. So if you have to memorize it, whichever one you like better, memorize it that way and then move on with your life. Um, and if you don't have to memorize it, you have a formula sheet, then don't bother wasting your time memorizing it. Just look at your formula sheet. All right, with that said, let's go on and write down. Hey, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention to you that what you're watching right now is a topic review from crambetter.com. On our website, you'll find more stuff like this, as well as study guides and sets of practice exam questions for every topic in your course. So be sure to check it out. But for now, let's get back to Write it. down all the things that we're going to plug into this thing. So normal boiling point, there's that phrase. So we know immediately that whatever that temperature is, the pressure that goes with it, it's going to be one atmosphere. So I'll call that P1. We'll say that's one atmosphere. And then T1, that's going to be the temperature 80.1. But remember, we need to convert that to Kelvin. So we're going to add 273. Now, you might say, well, isn't it 273.15? I mean, sure, you could use that if your professor really wants you to use that value instead. Not a big deal. It's probably not going to be too far off. So, you know, do what your professor likes. But here, I like to save a little bit of space, so I just don't put the 0.15. Anyway, we got 353.1 as that temperature in Kelvin. All right, good stuff. So now let's go on to the second pressure and temperature. Uh, at what temperature does benzene boil? So we're looking for some other temperature. I'm going to write that as T2. So T2 equals something. And then the pressure they tell us is 445 torr. So 445 torr. Cool. Now, immediately, I'm in torr. Right? They give me a pressure over here. Probably wanted to convert this atmospheres into torr. So that's going to be 760 torr. You definitely have to remember that conversion factor. So don't forget that. And now at this point, we have basically everything. They tell us the heat of, vapor heat of vaporization as well. So I'll write that down over here. And then we're just going to plug in and solve this equation. Uh, 30.72. Now, this is kilojoules per mole. Be really careful with this because R is in terms of joules. So you want to make that conversion. So if it says kilo, immediately multiply that by 10 to the third, replace the K with 10 to the third, and that's joules per mole. Okay, let's go ahead and plug all that in now. So I'm going to plug in, we got ln of P2, that's 445. You can write the units, but the units cancel. That's why it's important to just have the same unit for pressure when you're doing this over 760. And by the way, you may have noticed I called this one P1 and this one P2. It makes no difference which one is P1 and P2 as long as you just stay consistent. So if this is P1, well, the temperature that goes with P1 has to be T1. That's all. But it doesn't matter. You could have called this one P2. It makes no difference at all. The equation works the same regardless. All right. So then we get negative. Then delta H uh, right here is going to be 30.72 times 10 to the third. I'm not going to worry about units for right now because I know that everything is in joules and I have all of my SI units, so I don't have to worry too much about that. 8.314. Again, if you need to, write them down. It's not a big deal. It's never a bad thing to write units if you have the time to do so, right? And then T2. So what do we have for T2? Well, that's what we're trying to solve for. So we're going to put 1 over T2. It's the unknown. And then T1 is 353.1. So we're going to do 1 over 353.1. Cool. All right, so now on the left-hand side, I'm going to simplify that log expression. 
So I got ln of 445 divided by 760 comes out to negative 0.535. Now, if your calculator, if you're able to store variables in your calculator, highly recommend that you do that here so you can get the most accurate answer. So my calculator, I can store this using the STO and then alpha and then A. So I'm gonna call this variable A. I'm just gonna make a little note that I called that A. So for later, I can use that and get an exact answer, okay? Over here, do the same thing. I'm gonna get this negative 30.72. So negative 30.72 times 10 to the third, divide that by 8.314. And that's going to be some other nasty decimal, negative 3694. So I'll write that as negative 3694.97 times 1 over T2 minus. And then do the same thing. I'm going to store this as some variable. We'll call it like B. And go and do that here. And I'm going to do the same thing with this 1 over 353.1, just getting that as whatever number it is. Okay, so 1 over 353.1. And that's 0 0.00283. Such nice numbers here, right? But this is it, you know, this is the annoying part of doing this is just doing the algebra and making sure that we stay organized, okay? So now we're just gonna get T2 by itself. To do that, we're gonna divide both sides by this nasty negative 3694.97 number. So negative 3694.97, okay, that cancels from both sides. Remember, I have these stored as A and B. So again, you can round if you need to, probably fine if you round to like three or four decimal places, you'll get the right thing more or less. Um, but I'm just going to try to stay as exact as possible. I get 1.45 times 10 to the negative 4 on that side when I do that. So 1.45 times 10 to the negative 4. Once again, I do want that to be like an exact answer. So I am going to use that. But I can do a little shortcut here so I don't have to store like another variable. I can add that thing on this side, this 0 0.00283, which again... You can actually keep it as 1 over 353.1 as well, so you don't want to have those decimals. It's up to you. It's just some people don't really like looking at the fraction, which is why I put a decimal here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to the other side. So I'm going to do plus 0 0.00283. Add that to both sides. And you have an option here, okay? You could just, you know, basically add those like, you know, 0 0.00283.2 if you want to. But you could just straight up add plus 1 over 353.1 because that's what that is, right? So rather than putting the 0.00283 to get an exact answer, I'm just going to do what I have right here. I'm going to add 1 over 353.1. That's it, just adding that to the other side, because that 0.00283 is the same thing as 1 over 353.1. So I hit enter, and I got 0 0.002977, whatever. Okay, we're going to get an exact answer. So 0 0.00298, we'll just call it for right now, and make sure you can see that. Sorry about that. And that's 1 over T2. All right, so now finally... This is a really straightforward thing. You might want to do like cross multiplication, but I'm just going to give you a little trick. You can just do reciprocals of both sides to get that T2 by itself. So 0.00298 is going to be T2. So one divided by that. So I'll do that over here. One divided by what I just got as my answer. And that's going to be 335.9. So T2 is 335.9. Remember, we were in Kelvin. So we're going to keep that as Kelvin. If you needed to get this into Celsius, you could just subtract 273. So minus 273. And I got 62.9. So either one of those is fine as your answer. So we just want to do one last little logic check here to make sure that everything makes sense here. We have temperature uh, 62.9. We started with a temperature of 80.1. So now let's think about this. The pressure was 760. The temperature was 80.1. We expect there to be a direct relationship, right? clausius clapeyron equation basically tells us that, you know, if one increases, the other is going to increase. And we already knew that anyway from intermolecular forces and all that fun stuff. So do we get a lower temperature at a lower pressure. We do. 445 towards that new vapor pressure, and we have a lower temperature where that occurs. So good stuff, okay? The end of the day, the clausius clapeyron equation, it's just knowing the equation. It's just doing the algebra, which I know everyone's favorite thing in the world, right? Getting through all this really fun, nasty algebra. So what I'm gonna recommend to you is that you practice it, get to the point where you don't have to struggle come exam time. Take your time with this stuff. Definitely don't rush through it because that's when you start to make mistakes. You start to forget negative signs. All those like really common things happen because you're going too fast. So as you're practicing to master this, just go a little bit slower and you'll be good to go come exam time. If you wanna pass your classes the easy way, head to crambetter.com. We've got study guides, practice exam questions, and shorter, easier explanations for every topic in your class. So click the link in the video description and I'll see you there.